All right, so I've already seen this movie twice already, so I've had plenty of time to sleep on it, plenty of time to think about it. And you know what? I'm just ready to get to talking about it. So let's do this, guys. Batman. Hey, guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and this is my review for The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Jeffrey Wright, Paul Dano, and directed by Matt Reeves. Now, our plot follows Bruce Wayne two years into being the Batman, and he's trying to figure out, essentially, you know, what being the Batman means. You know, he's, he's already, he has his values where he doesn't want to kill, and he wants justice, but essentially, he's finding a hard time managing doing all that, just being one person in an entire corrupt city. He's trying to figure out ways to make sure that he can actually do what he was trying to do by putting on this suit and bring justice to the city and he's having an internal conflict with that throughout the movie now at the same time the Riddler played by Paul Dano he's out here killing famous figures of Gotham and essentially he needs Batman to figure out you know why he's doing it so that way that he can reveal not only a secret that has to do with Gotham's past but Bruce Wayne's past as well and guys I gotta admit what follows is one of the most jaw-dropping experiences I've ever seen. Like I, I was completely floored by this movie. Like it, like I, I know you. If this is probably like if you've seen reactions to this movie already, you see everybody going crazy about it. There are the few negative ones that you know. Honestly, just ignore those because this movie is fucking amazing from start to finish, ladies and gentlemen. Let me explain something to you. The first fifteen seconds. And I'm talking about not, there was not dialogue going on. The score did come on, but I'll talk about the score in a little bit. The score was a part of it, but the first 15 seconds for me, and I'm talking, this is straight credits. The credits were rolling, and I'm talking about WB, DC, and then you see it, the Batman. I already knew it was going to, I already knew it was showtime. I already knew it was go time. Now, essentially, you know, how, how, for those trying to figure out how you can actually figure out, figure out this movie's going to be good in 15 seconds. I just, I just got it like that, guys. I'm the guy in the chair. This is what I'm here for. This is what I do. But essentially, the first 15 minutes, you know for a fact that this is going to be an incredible ride because everything in the first 15 minutes is just absolutely phenomenal. You understand not only that you're going to get a great villain out of the Riddler, but you also understand that you are definitely going to get one of the best Batman performances you've ever seen. And I'm going to start with what I liked about the movie. And guys, it's a pretty long list. So let's get this started. So first I got to address, of course, the elephant in the room. And that's, of course, you know, whether or not Robert Pattinson was, you know, good as Batman. He wasn't good, guys. He was fantastic. I mean, from literally, like I said, the first 15 minutes of this opening, he has an opening dialogue that lets you know immediately, oh yeah, this is Batman. This is exactly who Batman is always portrayed, who he's always supposed to be portrayed to be. Um, you know that for a fact that he's going to be giving an amazing performance. Like, you just feel everything that you need to feel to feel comfortable about this movie for the rest of the runtime in the first 15 minutes. Like, you're, you are assured of everything in that first 15 minutes of the movie. Like, it's, it's, the opening is very pivotal to the movie. Of course, it introduces, you know, the world of Gotham, you know, what's going on, where we take, where are we going with this character of Bruce Wayne now? And the fact that, you know, he's only two years into his career, you see a lot of pain in Robert Pattinson's eyes. You know, he really captures the fact that, you know, Bruce Wayne is traumatized by what happened to his parents. And of course, you know, and we've seen, of course, Christian Bale, you know, Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck, you know, et cetera, George Clooney. We've seen those guys portray this character, but we've never seen the Bruce Wayne or Batman like this. And essentially what I mean is we've never seen, you know, him two years in where he's still so haunted by his past that he really doesn't even care about being Bruce Wayne. Like he's solely focused on being Batman. And that's the thing. Like he doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne at this point. He just wants to focus on Batman things and Batman things only. He's, it's to the point where, honestly, you feel, at least for me, I felt like, you know, he was it, like the Batman is kind of a suicide mission for him because he doesn't care whether or not he lives or dies. He just wants to do this. Like he's negating all things that, you know, all responsibilities outside of anything as far as being Batman. And honestly, like I said, guys, Robert Pattinson nails this performance to the T. Now, when I say that, I mean as in the Batman standpoint. Like when you look at, when you finish this movie, when you look at this movie, and when you see Robert Pattinson doing everything in this movie, you see Batman. You don't, you don't see, I don't, I didn't see anybody else. As far as him putting on that costume, he resembled Batman to a T. Like, like the comic book Batman. I'm not trying to say Christian Bale didn't do that all the way, but of course, you know, there are some, you know, elements to Christian Bale's Batman that were missing, such as, you know, 
the one of the big ones in my opinion, the world's greatest detective part. Now, granted, he does have some Christian Bale does have some moments in the movie where he tries to use his smarts and he and his wits and he and he you know solves some things, but not not like they do in this movie. This movie completely stays on the detective side. It's a complete mystery. It's noir and it's just beautiful to watch. It's really nice to see Robert Pattinson actually portraying a character that you know we we really. We honestly needed a virgin version of this Batman. We needed a dark, gritty, we needed, you know, we needed this. We needed Robert Pattinson as Batman. And honestly, I got to be honest, when people, you know, when Robert Pattinson was first casted as Batman, I was definitely not a part of the group that, you know, hated on him. You know, one, I'm actually a fan of, you know, going outside of the box to cast superheroes nowadays because it's like, you don't necessarily, you want to see, you want to unlock like all potential for uh the character and robert pattinson has phenomenal like his ceiling is there honestly there i don't i don't see a ceiling he he could go down if this trilogy if hopefully they do a trilogy but if they do this series of batman movies if this continues it's he's probably going to go down as one of the best batman of all time because i was just like i said my jaw was on the floor the entire movie literally from start to finish. And this is a three hour movie, so I never picked my job for three hours. That, that's impressive, that, that's impressive. Not too many movies can say they've done that to me at least. No, three, you know, movies with three hour plus run times, of course, but no. Robert Pattinson is Batman and he portrayed it so well. And honestly, I, I do want to say that this is one of the best portrayals I've seen in a long time, but I can't because No Way Home just came out and Tom Holland, he's Spider-Man, you know, not only, well, Andrew Garfield, uh, Tobey Maguire, they're Spider-Man as well, but, you know, Tom Holland is Spider-Man, but, like I said, this is a phenomenal portrayal of the character Batman, and I, I was just, I, I was in shock, honestly, I couldn't believe he did this good of a job, he was phenomenal in the movie, now, granted, I will say, as far as his Bruce Wayne goes, he's, he's not necessarily there yet, and like I said, it's honestly because he's only two years into being the Batman, and he's still trying to figure out how to really balance all of that. Like he's trying to figure out who the Batman is or what kind of symbol he's going to be. Like is he a symbol of hope? Is he a symbol of vengeance? He's essentially trying to find a way to give people hope in Gotham because I gotta be honest, this is a dark Gotham. This, this, this Gotham that we get in the movie is unlike any other Gotham we've ever seen. This is, this is all credit goes to Matt Reeves because this Gotham is one of the worst places you essentially Gotham is supposed to be one of the worst places on earth to live you don't want to be there and I can tell you right now this Gotham I don't even want to go anywhere near Christian Bale's Gotham I mean you know it was Christian Bale's Gotham was bright and essentially there was crime going on in the city but that really could have been subject to anything you know what I'm saying it could have been subject to anything that that Gotham was not what this is the, the, the movie itself the cinematography it's dark it shows it's raining all the time it's not a happy place gotham is not a happy place to be in and this is why we need batman to save us because this place stinks it's full of criminals and it's crazy people and it's all showing in this movie and i honestly like i said i i'm just surprised i'm my my jaw Floor. I'm probably going to say that a lot in this interview, uh, not this interview, but probably going to say this a lot in this review, so I do apologize. Another thing that I thoroughly enjoyed about this movie was Paul Deneau's portrayal as the Riddler. Granted, the entire cast did well, but Robert Pattinson and Paul Deneau were easily the standouts in this movie. First of all, I gotta give, like I said, I gotta give credit to the entire, I guess, department, or, you know, not only Matt Reeves, but everybody who was working on this movie, writing it, you know, because picking the Riddler as... Uh, a character or a villain for this movie it's kind of it's not necessarily left field because it's been done before but by Jim Carrey but you did you've never seen a version of Riddler like this 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 Riddler is Paul Dano adds a whole nother element to it like Jim Carrey he for me he really you know caught the c comical side of Riddler and he's crazy but it's like you know it's Jim Carrey crazy so it's not necessarily like you know for me at least it wasn't necessarily like you know, how dangerous the Riddler could be. This version of Riddler is straight maniacal. Like this, like this guy is not okay in the head at all. And you can, and it's honestly beautiful to see. And, I, you know, Paul Dano, if you've never seen Prisoners, I do have to say that's one of Hugh Jackman's best performances. But Paul Dano in Prisoners 
is absolutely incredible. Prisoners is one of my top t 10 movies of all time, I will say. But you guys, if you haven't seen Prisoners, please go check that out. But his performance in this movie is absolutely incredible. First of all, his motive. I won't, I'm not, this is not a spoiler warning, so I'm not going to go deep into, you know, essentially his motives and, you know, why he's killing the people, of course. That's for you guys to find out. I want you guys to go watch this movie, enjoy it for what it is. And I got to be honest, his motive for the one was absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, essentially a lot of villains where they kind of lose me in superhero movies, it, it, it's the same, you know, destroy the world type thing. But no, like the Riddler's motive here was something that not only drove the entire movie, it drove Batman. It drove a character driven, had a character driven story behind it. And it brought Batman to a place where he's actually having to realize his place in Gotham and essentially where he stands between the lines of justice and vengeance and Paul Dano, you did a phenomenal job, my friend. I, I really, I just standing ovation views. Definitely one of the best performances, uh, best villain performances I've seen. Uh, again, No Way Home. Yeah, that movie just stands on top. William Defoe, yeah, William Defoe still beat you, Paul Dano. But Paul Dano, as the Riddler, you're a phenomenal guy, and I really enjoyed you. I could probably go on and on about how much I enjoyed everybody in this movie and the cast, but particularly, I'm just going to go ahead and shout out three more people, and that's going to be... Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon, and Colin Farrell as Penguin. Starting with Zoe Kravitz, she did a phenomenal... First of all, she gave off such good Selena Kyle vibes. Not, not, not vibes like that's who she's playing, but essentially Selena Kyle vibes from Batman the Animated Series, which is, in my opinion, one of the best cartoons of all time. Look... And that's that's what this entire movie does. It gives you those Batman animated series vibes. It gives you those Arkham Asylum game vibes. And it just feels wonderful. It feels right. It feels like we're actually watching Batman like we've never seen him before. I've never, like me, like I said, I've never seen Batman like this. I, granted, The Dark Knight is a top tier movie. And I will later, you know, go into discussion about where, you know, Bat the Batman and Dark Knight rank up against each other. But as far as I'm concerned, I've never seen Batman in this light and I've never seen it so close to home. Like the animated series for me, that is peak level Batman. That is everything that, you know, Batman is supposed to be. And this movie does everything in its power to get that close to it. And it does that with, you know, these ad additional characters. Like I said, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman was phenomenal. I thought her and Robert Pattinson worked very well together. I thought they had very good chemistry. Some of the romance or like her feelings toward him, I don't want to say we're kind of random, but I mean, you know, she just, she, you know, Selena Kyle, she's just trying to make a way. She's just trying to survive. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to give it, I'm not going to nitpick on this one because like I said, I enjoyed her performance a very great deal. Another performance, like I said, Jim Gordon, Jeffrey Wright, absolutely killed it. First of all, they have like a this buddy cop vibe going on where they're just trying to figure out, you know, Jim Gordon's the only guy on the force that trusts him and, you know, nobody else knows why he's even in the room. You know, all the other cops are just scared of him or they just want him out. They don't want him around. And Jim Gordon, and, you know, he takes his, he sticks his neck out for this guy, man. And, you know, it's cool to see these two interact so young in Batman's career. Like I said, we've never seen this before. The fact that, I love the fact that this story took place two years into into, you know, Batman being Batman because you, you re, we really didn't get to see where, like, you, you, you know where his values come from because if you know the story of Batman, you've seen it. But it, it's like, in previous Batman movies, they've always been, you know, glanced over. It's never been, you know, fully gone into depth of why he does things the way he was or how he how he's come to, you know, become the, the world's greatest detective that we all know and love today. And this movie does a great job of portraying that between not only him and Catwoman, but him and Jim Gordon. And I got to shout out one more guy. And this is a guy that I need a lot more of in these series of movies. And that is Colin Farrell as Penguin. When I tell you that every time this man was on the screen, he was thoroughly entertaining. He was, he honestly, he stole the show. Penguin stole the show every time he showed up on screen. Colin Farrell, I don't know how you did it in all that makeup and, and you know, whatever else they had to do to add weight to your body, bro, but you absolutely did that. I I am ready to see you in so many more movies. And I like I said, guys, I can rant about this entire cast because they have all they all did a great job. It's a great cast and crew from start to bottom. Well, from top to bottom, I'm messing up here. But uh, no, it's a phenomenal. It's a phenomenal cast, phenomenal performances all around, and 
I'm just, I'm just going to get into more of what I liked here because, like I said, guys, it's a big list, so here we go. Now, of course, I got to talk about the score of this movie because it was made by Michael Giacchino or Giacchino. I hope I'm saying that right. If not, I'm just going to say Mikey G just to, you know, shorten it a little bit. But his score in this movie is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, once you get the credits in the beginning of the movie, you get WB, DC, the Batman, and the score for ev the score starts... It's beautiful. Every scene has this has a wonderful, wonderful score. Like I said, it, it's it's throughout the entire movie that he's honestly showing his ass with these compositions that he's making up. First of all, I gotta say, Batman's theme, phenomenal. Riddler's Riddler's theme, or you know, the music that plays while Riddler's doing his thing, Riddler things, it's great. The Batmobile <laughs> the Batmobile chase scene. Let me explain something to you. That trailer undersold that scene so much. I'm not even gonna. The Batmobile reveal itself is hype, and honestly, um, I was talking to this with one of my friends. I really wish that you know there were more people in the theater cheering for that because that was a fan. That was a fan worthy moment. I got to be honest. Like I wasn't necessarily when I saw the pictures of the Batmobile. I was like, all right, that's cool. They're doing something different. I mean, it's his, it's his second year. You know, essentially he'll probably get closer to the model that we're used to probably by the you know second or third movie, but. In this, I like the model that they made in this one, and they made it so cool, like I said. And the entire chase scene is just phenomenal. And I know I'm talking about the score here, but you know, the score in this entire movie is just incredible, and you feel it. You know, it makes it so much more emotional, it, makes, it gives it so much more depth. And like I said, Mikey G, you knocked that out of the park, my friend. Another thing that I wanted to talk about that I thoroughly enjoyed throughout this movie was the action sequences. First of all, Batman, those memes that you see of, you know, Batman, the way he beats people to a pulp anytime he just wants to know a question, that's, that, that happens in this movie. He's beating people to a pulp. You know, you feel every punch, every fight. And I, you know, honestly, what made the action sequences stand out though was Catwoman because the way they had her fighting, you know, it's, it's, she's very swift. She's quick. And it, you know, for those who are saying, yeah, she's Catwoman does, she's supposed to fight like that. If you've seen the movie, you know, you know what I actually mean. It's not, it's a very unique fighting style she uses. And it's like, and it's throughout the entire movie. It's even when she doesn't have the suit on and it's really cool to see. It's, it's like, you know, they had attention to detail when it came to these action sequences and they wanted to make it that much more real for you and they do a great job in doing so. Now, I know I gave him his flowers in the beginning of the video, but essentially I, I gotta keep talking about it, man. Matt Reeves directed the hell out of this movie. First of all, he not only created a world that we're so used to, essentially, or actually not that we're used to because he creates a Gotham that we've never even seen before this this like I said guys this this Gotham is so much more darker and it's so much more just intense than we've ever seen on screen before and I gotta be honest he opened up a world of possibilities it's like I, there's so many villains that you want to different villains that you want to see in this world like you really feel like you're gonna get the craziest type of you know villains that come out of this world and I'm like aside from Joker because you know Joker honestly I know for a fact that Joker it will I, I don't know if I'll say more intense in this one because like I said the Riddler he gave a phenomenal performance and he was absolutely batshit crazy so I mean no pun intended but essentially you know he was insane and honestly the Joker he's got to be crazier than that so they're probably going to tune that up probably like two or three notches and I'm very excited to see that but essentially, like I said, Matt Reese has opened up a world of possibilities for this movie. And not not the only this movie, but this entire series. And I'm hoping they make... I honestly want to see Robert Pattinson as his character for maybe three or four more movies. Like, I, I, do, I do. I need him as this character because I can... Like I said, when it's all said and done, he is going to be the best Batman that we've seen in cinema history. He will be Batman by the end of this. And I hope they let Matt, Matt Reeves direct these movies because, like I said, he's given so much time... To the, he's given so much time to this one and honestly he's create he's set up a, he's set up so much in it he set up he set up what could possibly be another maybe a 10 year run of Batman movies if we're being honest like I said guys this Gotham is a place that we definitely want to explore for a while I can't I honestly can't wait to get to the Arkham Asylum I I want to see so much more from this I really he opened up a world of possibilities and I honestly want them to go a lot deeper into their bag of villains I want to see a lot I want to see maybe the count of owls my my personal preference I really want to see a Mr. Freeze I got to be honest uh, that story Mr. Freeze 
in the animated series or his story in general always resonated with me or stayed with me. I don't know why, but like it was always so painful to watch. And it's something that I know on screen, especially now with Matt Reeves directing and just, you know, the, all the updated technology we have in 2022. I know for a fact a Mr. Freeze movie would probably be one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. I know Mr. Freeze has, to, I need Mr. Freeze to be in this franchise. I need him to be a team up with Penguin. I need, I need him in the next movie. It's just as simple as that. Now, surprisingly, guys, I got to be honest, there was nothing I necessarily disliked about the movie or there wasn't anything that, you know, really turned me off from the movie because I already walked in with the expectation that this movie was going to be long. It is three hours. And for those people that want to be technical and say it's not a three hour movie yet, yeah, it's probably like two hours and 48 minutes and then eight minutes of credits on top of that. But like, let's just round that up. That's three hours. So there's no point in you being technical. Come on, guys. You, you, it's a three hour movie. But I walked in, you know, expecting it to be three hours. And I honestly thought I was honestly ready to just bash on that. Well, not bash on it, but I was honestly ready to just, you know, give my usual spiel about how, you know, movies with a three plus hour runtime can only be so entertaining or, you know, not only, but, you know, they don't need to be that long. But and as you do feel the weight of this movie, so it's kind of a nitpick for me, I, I, you do feel that this movie is pretty long. I, I honestly was thoroughly entertained throughout it. And I, I can't even lie, when the movie when the movie was over on my first viewing, I, I, wanted, I could probably sit there and watch, you know, maybe two, two more hours of that. If, if they had like more footage for me to watch, if, if they wanted to do a Zack Schneider version and just show me the entire, all the deleted scenes, I would have been good. Cause you no, know, that, that, I, that was needed that I felt like I needed more after that. And I was thoroughly surprised about that because the movie was already three hours long. And essentially another, and this is kind of just what I've seen from people's reactions or essentially what I've seen online. Some people had a problem with the third act. I think this is one of the best third acts in a Batman that we've actually gotten. Maybe, honestly, I gotta say ever. This is honestly one of the best third acts we've gotten in a Batman movie ever because honestly it does so much for the character of Batman it's really bringing him to life it's making him so much more it's making him into the character we all know and love it's giving that bat symbol on his chest actual meaning and, I, and like I said this is no bashing on Christian Bale because he made the Dark Knight the, the Christ, Christopher Nolan trilogy is legendary and it will and it does go down in his cinema history as one of the best trilogies of all time but like I said, guys, Robert Pattinson is coming for that throne. Essentially, if he hasn't already passed it for most of you, he's he's already took the Batman throne for me. As far as Bruce Wayne goes, or the best of both, Christian Bale still owns that. But I know for but Robert Pattinson is coming for that crown. By the end of this, by the end of his Batman career, Robert Pattinson will have the crown of the best Bruce Wayne, the best Batman, and maybe damn near one of the best superhero portrayals we've ever seen in in our lifetime. And I'm ready to see that. But as far as the runtime goes, yeah, I mean, I it, it didn't really bother me that much. If you wanted to nitpick, you could maybe take off like 10, 15 minutes of the movie. But I got to be honest, for me, there's no part that I would that I didn't that I wanted to take out. There's no part of the movie that I wanted to essentially just be like, yeah, y'all could have left that out. I was good. I was entertained through it throughout the entire thing. It was very good for me. So my overall thoughts, guys, look, Robert Pattinson is Batman. At the end of the day, once you walk out of this theater, that that is the that is the emotion that I had. And honestly, that's why I had to go see the movie again, because I had to make sure that everything I was feeling out of that first viewing was real. And let me explain something to you. It's even better a second time. It is real. Robert Pattinson is the real deal. He is here to be our Batman. He is here to change the game. And I hope that Matt Reeves opens up an entire world. And I, I got to be honest, as much as I am you know, looking forward to, you know, the villains that they will use or where they're going to go with this world. I, I honestly, I, I really want them to kind of pump the brakes on Joker for a little bit, because like I said, there's, there's a lot, there's so much in this world that he could do. And there's so many stories that they can unwrap and there's so many villains that they can go into. And there's so, there's just so much they can do. And honestly, as you know, it's Batman, so essentially you are going to need the Joker at some point, or maybe, you know, you got to have the Joker at some point, but like I said, guys, he, we can pump the brakes on that a little bit, at least for the sequel, at least for this next movie, let's not, let's not it put do a Joker thing, uh, let's give, let, let's give Mr. Freeze a chance, please, I feel like that, that is a character that has been long overdue for another chance in the movie, I'm not that, I, I, I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze, just because, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, grew up on the animated series 
and that Mr. Freeze and that story and how dark that can that story is and how honestly it's a heart crusher too how much that story affects me I would rather see something closer to that portrayal and I know for a fact that Matt Reeves can bring it out and honestly guys I'm just excited to see where this goes like I said I want to see Robert Pattinson play Batman for a very long time hopefully we get to see him at least for three or four more movies and I gotta be honest I was honestly upset at the fact that when this movie was first announced I was first upset at the fact that they were saying he wasn't going to be a part of the Justice League but now that I've watched this movie please keep him away from anything Justice League related let's not even let's not even dive let's not even let him go near Metropolis at this point like let, let, let's just leave him in Gotham and let him do Gotham and Batman things because we're not no the Justice League just needs to kick rocks at this point DC figure it out figure out what you're gonna do with the justice league but thank you for the batman because this movie is freaking amazing so for my rating guys i'm gonna go ahead and give batman a 4.5 out of 5 stars look don't let that 0.5 fool you this movie is absolutely phenomenal i enjoyed it all the way up here as far as that where it holds up to the dark knight i gotta be honest they're neck and neck they are right there. they are right there with each other and i gotta be honest the only thing that's causing me not to say that this movie is better than the dark knight is heath ledger's performance if there was any other actor or any other villain in that movie that they did, the Dark Knight would would have been surpassed. The Batman would have surpassed the Dark Knight. But at some point, I feel like the Dark Knight will be surpassed, and that'll more than likely be with this next movie. If 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 Matt Reeves stays on board and they make sh and they let him have all the control and they just just literally bring back everybody that you had on this first movie, and you guys will have. A franchise on your hands you already do but you will definitely you'll have a bigger franchise than you already have right now and that's my review guys so thank you so much i really appreciate you guys for watching please be sure to like subscribe comment down below if you've seen the batman what did you think what are your theories what villains do you guys want to see in this world um and just let me know your overall thoughts on robert pattinson's performance and if christian bale your favorite honestly let me know who your favorite batman is as well um but thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it